Welcome to the sixth lecture of the Advanced Calculus course. Today we will learn the concept, concept of continuity. Now, this will be the beginning, the first step for our discussion of theorems, important theorems in real analysis, such as the intermediate value theorem or mean value theorem, which are, which are really important theorems in both calculus and real analysis, but the the rigorous mathematical proofs of these, these theorems require the uh, exact understanding of the concept of continuity. So this will be the beginning of our discussion to fulfill the original purpose of our course, to prove these important concepts in <coughs> high school mathematics that are not rigorously explained in our textbooks. So what is continuity? Now, the definition of continuity is as follows. Uh, for a subset large A, a real set, and an element of that set, a function f with domain large A is said to be continuous at A if the sequence of the values of the function converges to the value at A whenever the sequence of the variables inside the uh, inside the sequence we're talking about converges to A. So what that means is that whenever there's a continuous function F if there is a point a comma f a in this function like this, any sequence that converges to uh, a will have its uh, sequence of the values of those terms also converge to the value of the function at the uh, at the exact value it is converging to. So what that means is that limit n to infinity f a n is equal to f a. Uh, you will probably uh, remember the uh, definition we use in high school textbooks that is the limit of when x uh, approaches a, fx is equal to fa. Uh, these are the these are the uh, two different expressions for the same concept, and also this statement. Uh, this statement. Uh, this this is a mathematical way of saying this statement. So this is the definition of continuity we will use throughout this course. So let's have some examples. For example, uh, let's see. Um, consider a constant function. That is, let's say, fx equals 1. Uh, then this function is continuous. Uh, oh, wait. Um, I left that out of the uh, definition of continuous. Uh, function f is said to be continuous if it is continuous at every point, every a uh, in in its domain. So, if a function uh, the function is continuous if it is continuous at every point in its domain. So this function, the constant function f x equals one, is continuous because and just give me any value a and consider any sequence that converges to f uh, uh, any sequence that converges to the value a then the sequence of f a sub n 
that will converges that will converge to f a which is one because every every term in this sequence is one so the sequence one 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 and so on that will obviously converge to one so the constant function is a continuous function now how about the absolute value function let's say gx equals the absolute value of x then this function is continuous as well because if a sequence convert uh, a sub n converges to a then we know that for any positive epsilon there exists a natural number large n such that for any natural number greater than that number uh, the difference between the uh, a sub n the term in this uh, the nth term in the sequence and the value it is converging to that would be uh, less less than epsilon so this is the uh, definition of convergence we have learned in the previous lecture so whenever this holds we know that f a n the sequence f a n a sub uh, f a sub n will converge to f a because we know that if we consider the difference of a, f a sub n and f a, which is simply the absolute, val absolute value of a sub n minus the absolute value of a, which is again less than or equal to a sub n minus a, which is less than epsilon. Uh, you will need to prove for this part, which is fairly easy, so I'll leave it as an exercise. So, um, whenever uh, a, uh, the sequence a sub n conver converges to the value a, we could easily prove that the sequence a f a sub n co also converges to f a because uh, using the same uh, large n, we could know that for any uh, natural number n greater than the n, the nth term of the sequence f a sub n will be closer to uh, close to f a uh, as a distance less than epsilon for any epsilon for any positive epsilon. So, by the definition of convergence, we know that the sequence f a sub n also converges to f a. So the function the absolute value function is another con another example of a continuous function now what would be a would be an example of a function that is not continuous consider the following function a piecewise function that is defined as following hx equals 0 when x is less than 0 and 1 when x is greater than or equal to 0. So the graph of the function will look something like this. This point would be 1 and this point would be 0. This function is not continuous at a because uh, consider the following function uh, minus 1 over n we could easily check that this uh, sequence converges to value 0. However, oh, not, it's not f. Uh, however, if we look at the sequence of the function values for, uh, corresponding to the sequence, which is simply a, which is simply a uh, constant sequence with all of its terms 0, which will obviously converge, converge to 0, which is not equal to the actual value of that function in that point. So we're looking at 
the sequence that converges to zero, but the uh, but the function values corresponding to the terms in that sequence, which is all zero, is never equal to the actual value of the function value at the point it is converging to. So this function hx is not uh, is not continuous at zero. And uh, for the and for any other points except zero, it is it could be proven that the function is continuous, but still it is not continuous at uh, at a single point. So we could say that this function is not continuous. Now, but there is a different definition of continuity that would that we would more often use throughout this course. The definition is constructed through a method called the epsilon delta method. So using this method, I'll try to write the definition that we will more you know, use more often throughout the course. A function f from a set A, set large A, a subset of uh, the set of all real numbers, is continuous at A, which is a point in, that is in its domain, if Uh, for any epsilon, for any positive epsilon, there exists a corresponding positive value delta such that the fact that x is close to a by a distance less than epsilon guarantees that the difference between the function values of those two points is less than epsilon. Now, well, this definition might seem quite elusive at first sight. So let me try to uh, visual visualize this definition. Uh, what this means is that for a function f, The function f is continuous at a point a comma f a if the uh, if we could find a, for any epsilon we should start at this point uh, for any epsilon that is a positive number there's this uh, epsilon band, uh, a band that continues the function values that is close to f a by a distance less than epsilon, and such band exists for any positive epsilon that you you want to give, uh, and the and then the function f is continuous when you could find a positive number positive number delta such that that the fact that x minus a is less than delta guarantees the fact that the function va the values of the functions lie in that epsilon band so oh, it's really difficult to uh, explain well but let me try so if you look at these points let's say uh, a uh, a plus a plus k and a minus l oh, oops uh, a plus k and a minus l. If you look at these points and let's say delta is the smaller of l and k, which in this case in this picture is l. So uh, yeah, if we look at this delta, which is 
a the length of the uh, which is the distance of x from a uh, for any x that lies in this interval a minus delta and a plus delta uh, let's use an open interval for any x that lies in this, this interval you could see that the value of the function at that point fx this fx uh, lies in this epsilon band uh, well that would be the same for an x that would be same for an x uh, any x in the interval uh, in the interval we specified so whenever x minus a is less than delta so whenever x lies in this interval a minus epsilon to a plus epsilon we could see that the uh, function values the fx is closer uh, is close to fa by a distance smaller uh, less than epsilon so this implies this as it could be seen in this picture so any for any number x in that interval you could see that the function values these function values let me try to use a different color for this the the, the function values starting from here and to here the function values all lie in the epsilon uh, all lie in the epsilon value we specified from here to here so this is the uh, concept of continuity in terms of epsilon delta and the concept is really quite el elusive when you first learn it but uh, hopefully if you uh, if you get used to this definition and try try to use it every time when you need to uh, prove a continuity for a function then probably uh, and hopefully you'll grasp, grasp the notion of uh, this definition and the important part is that we can we could prove the equivalence of these two definitions so whenever this definition holds the epsilon delta definition also holds and vice versa so this is the uh, the really important thing that we need to Proof because this is the original definition of continuity we uh, used to use, and this is the new definition of continuity that we're going to use. So what we need to do is that we should prove that this definition is compatible uh, with the uh, with our original definition. So the proof is uh, proof of one way of this equivalence, probably. Uh, I believe uh, which direction was it? Uh, well, one way proof of this equivalence is quite easy but the other way could be quite difficult but still it's a uh, great exercise for you to try so uh, try to pr uh, please try to prove that the, the original definition of continuity that we first learned this lecture and the epsilon uh, and the definition of continuity using the epsilon delta method is also uh, is equivalent to that definition so please try to prove it it isn't uh, it'll be a good, ex good exercise so this is the end of the sixth lecture of the advanced calculus course and we will deal with some more important concepts and theorems in real analysis in the next lecture using the concept of continuity that we have learned in this lecture Thank you and see you at the next lecture.